Next, we'll look at area and perimeter of triangles. Okay, so let's say we have a triangle like this with sides A, B, and C. The perimeter is easy. Perimeter is just equal to the sum of the lengths of the three sides, so A plus B plus C. Area is slightly tricky. So for area, you need to draw the height. You need to know the height of this triangle. So height is is a segment, a line segment that you draw from one vertex to the other, such that the angle that's formed is 90 degrees. Okay, so this is known as H. H height, also known as the altitude. Altitude of the triangle. Okay, so once you know this height, then the area is easy. It's just one half times height times the, the, the length of the triangle, the size of the triangle where you drew the height. So in this case, B. Okay, but it doesn't have to be. Wherever you draw the, you can have multiple heights. Well, there are three heights you can draw on the triangle. Um, and we'll look at that in a moment. Okay, but for the time being, height times the, the segment, the, the, the side of the line for you to the height. Okay, uh, let's look at a scenario where the height is not easy to, to find. Usually the height is not straightforward given. You have to calculate and find it yourself. So let's say we have a triangle. We have an obtuse angle triangle. Okay. Oops. Right? And in this case, let's say this side is A, this is A, and this is C. <clears throat> in this case, sometimes you can, you know the length outside the triangle. So here, if I know this length, this can also be a height. Since if I extend this side of the triangle further, this line segment, if it makes an angle of 90 degrees, is a height of the triangle. So I can use that as the for the area calculation. Okay. So so the point is that sometimes you have to do other line segments to find the area of a triangle. Okay. Um, okay. Earlier I said that you can have more than one height in a triangle. Why is that? So let's say we have a triangle. Size A, B, and C. So this is the easiest height, right? Now, but the thing is, you can do this with on any side of the triangle. So let's say I draw an altitude from this vertex to here, and as long as this is ninety, uh, I can use that as the altitude or the height of the triangle. So so let's say this is H one. This is H. Two, so I can have area equal one half h two, and now since h two is on the side a, I'll use a. Okay. Similarly, I can have uh, one drawn on b. Okay, and and let's say this is h three, so then the area would be one half h three times b. Okay. So, so this, this is rather rarely used. Usually, you won't be drawing that many heights. You will be just drawing a simple height. Um, I've never seen a uh, GRE question where you have to draw multiple heights. Anyways, <clears throat> next I want to talk about a bit about areas of equilateral triangles. So, equilateral triangles. Let's talk about that. So, we know an equilateral triangle is one where all the sides and angles are equal. Okay. So, all the sides are equal. Let's say the sides are S, S, S. All the angles are equal and angles are 60 degrees, right? <clears throat> now, what about the area of an equilateral triangle? Okay, so one way to do is that, well, Let's draw the height. So I draw the height from here to here. Okay. Now, in an equilateral triangle, when you draw a height or altitude, it does two things. First of all, it, it bisects your angle here. So you get two 
30 degrees angles here okay and the other thing it does is that it bisects your your base or the the side of the triangle on which you do the height into two equal parts so s over 2 s over 2 okay so this is important an altitude of an equilateral triangle bisects the angle into equal halves as well as it bisects the side on which the altitude is drawn okay now if you'll see what you have done is that you have formed two 30 60 90 triangles okay <clears throat> by drawing this altitude such that the side opposite to 30 degree is s over 2 the side opposite to the 90 degree is s right and it makes sense because if you go back to your x deal you have x x root 3 and 2x right so s over 2 if you times 2 you get s so so that makes sense and similarly the side opposite to 60 degree would be s root 3 over 2 okay which also happens to be the height of the triangle so the area is now easy to calculate your one half times uh, height times base right let's say so one half height is s root 3 over 2 and the base is oops the base is just s right yeah so the base is the whole thing where you do the altitude so it's s right so this gives you s square root 3 over 4 okay <clears throat> so area of an equilateral triangle is given by this formula and this you should memorize okay so you should not be going through this process where you're driving the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle just memorize it that area of an equilateral triangle is side squared times root 3 over 4 okay but this general thing you should know that in an equilateral triangle if you draw an altitude you will get two 30 60 90 triangles okay and this, the sides are in these ratios the, this would come very handy <clears throat> all right let's do some problems on area okay so first we have this rectangle and we want to find what is the area of triangle BED so B E D all right we want to find its area well we know area is equal to one half base times height right so the question is what's the height here well what if I take B E to be the base and I extend this further then side DC which makes a right angle on this extended base can be considered a height of triangle BED so that makes calculation very straightforward your base BE is 4 so base again is the side on which the altitude is drawn or the height is drawn so we are drawing the height this on base BE and the height is 12 okay so I'm 6 24 area comes out to be 24 <coughs> simple all right next is what is the perimeter of the same triangle so we want to find the perimeter of BED okay so we know one side is 4 <coughs> let me use another color so one side is 4 what about side DE okay well DE is the hypotenuse of this triangle right and this is a right triangle with other two sides being 5 12 and remember you have 5 12 13 right triangle so BE has to be 13 okay <clears throat> now what about BD well let's look at this other triangle other right triangle AB I know is 12 it's the side of a rectangle so this is 12 that has to be 12 and AD would be the sum of 5 and 4 which is 9 okay so now this let's see so 9 12 I have 9 12 I want to know the hypotenuse again can I go with 3 4 5 triangle see what's the multiple ratio here is 3 so 3 times 3 is 9 4 times 3 is 12 5 times 3 is 15 so this has to be 15 so my perimeter would be 15
14 plus 13 plus 4 okay that comes out to be 15 and 4 is 19 for 32 32 <clears throat> okay all right next one so this is uh, a question very close to an actual shy question I won't say more okay so we have these triangles here and this is the information given triangle ABC ABC is an equilateral triangle okay uh, area of triangle DEC which is the smaller triangle inside ABC is one ninth the area of triangle ABC okay AB is parallel to D this is a sign of par of being parallel so side AB and DE are parallel and we want to find the ratio of BE which is this side <coughs> over EC which is this side okay All right. let's go through this information one by one so first we know ABC is a collateral which means this angle this angle this angle all of these are 60 degrees okay now I know something about the areas but before I go into area I'm going to use this information AB is parallel to DE so if I extend AB so this is AB is parallel to DE DE now you can see that you have two parallel lines you have this third line right which is intersecting two parallel lines so you get this angle and angle E and angle B are corresponding angles so angle B and angle E are corresponding angles so this goes back to our lesson on, on types of angles so, so corresponding angles are equal so angle E is also equal to 60 degrees okay so this is important this is how we use this parallel information uh, so if angle E is 60, it means angle D is also 60 and you have an equilateral triangle. So triangle DEC is also equilateral. Okay. Alright. So this is important too. This is important information that we found. Um, the DEC is also equilateral. Now let's use this information. <coughs> area of triangle DEC so let's we know the area of equilateral triangles is given by s square root 3 over 4 so let's say the side of triangle DEC is s1 s1 <coughs> okay maybe I'll use a different color for this so now we're using the area information so s1 square root 3 over 4 uh, and s1 is the side of uh, triangle DEC <coughs> is equal to one ninth the area of triangle ABC so let's say that's S2 the side of triangle ABC is S2 so S2 root 3 over 4 okay uh, root 3 over 4 root 3 over 4 is common so that goes out so we are left with S2 squared over 9 over S1 squared let's take the square root of both sides and we get that s1 is one third of s3 okay uh, so which means that if s1 is let's say one one portion then bc which is side of abc would be three right that's what the one third tells me so if s1 is one then bc would be three and be would be two you got you got all that so so we are looking at EC uh, BC and BE so I'm saying if EC which is the side of the small triangle one then BC which is the tr uh, side of ABC would be three okay and as a corollary um, BE would have to be two okay so now we know all of our values so the ratio would be two BE is two we are taking that to be 2 and EC is 1 <coughs> okay so so since we only need to know the ratio we don't need to know the exact values we can go with this uh, you know just the ratio values and coming up with a ratio that works okay so the ratio 
comes out to be 2 to 1. <clears throat> okay, so this is definitely one of the harder questions that you'll see on the GRE, but it's good practice. There's lots of different things we had to use, equilateral triangles, parallel uh, lines, corresponding angles, uh, area of equilateral triangles, all this information. So, and ratios also. So good practice overall, okay?